Hi, welcome back to another edition of The Dreaming Tree Presents. Uh, this week we are doing live at Fenway Park, Live Tracks Volume 6, not a DVD this time, and we also have a special wine for you guys, a nice wine pairing. Um, so yes, we have a Maryland Pinot Noir from Deep Creek Lake, if you're familiar with the area. Um, and this description on the back, I'll just read it real quick. Um, anyone reared on high alcohol West Coast Pinot may not know this classic Burgundian velvet cherry ethos. Ideal conditions at Bear Hill Vineyard and attentive winemaking created ideal tension between flavor and texture in 2015. Note the subtle streaks of mineral, leather, flowers, and smoke married with flavors of dark cherry and pomegranate. Um, I'll let you open that. It's got a really cool like wax seal instead of a foil. Right. There's the label, Friendsville, Maryland, Pinot Noir. Um, um, yeah, just a lot of nice vineyards. Wax seal as well. Anyway. A lot of vineyards in you know the Maryland, Virginia region where we live really steer away from Pinot Noirs. Um, you won't find many vineyards that will do it just because it is such a different flavor, like the label said, than those West Coast Pinot Noirs. Um, in my opinion, I think they're really, 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 really smoky, really earthy, like far more than any um, other Pinot Noir. More on the side of a cab, but still even more earthy than that. Um, that's just my experience with Virginia Pinot Noir, so we'll see how this Maryland vineyard does um, in comparison, but I'm not a huge fan of the Pinot Noirs in this region. But let's give it a shot. Hmm, alrighty. Hmm. Interesting. All right, there you go. Yeah, I feel like the last one I had a Virginia Pinot Noir, it's just very, it's so earthy that it almost tastes like dirt to the, very point, light to color. the point of manure. Very light, almost like apple juice coloring. Very light and see-through. Anyway. Yeah, very hmm. heavy cherry. Yeah, cherry, acidic, um, hmm. All right, cheers. Not bad. This is very different, different. Yeah. yeah. On the back of your tongue, um, you get the very smokiness. Yeah, smoky, uh, yeah, I don't get much of, like, the dirt. Um, it's very, very bitter. Bitter and sour. Yeah, on the back end. Different though, but still very light. Like very light, very light. Not heavy wine. at all. Yeah. Um, just kind of goes down super easy. Anything else to say? Um, very tangy. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. Sour. Yeah, the sour. Vinegary. Is, yeah. Um, almost like a. It just almost has like the flavor in the back of it, like a white wine. Yeah. And then it goes down. Yeah, I mean, there's no, uh, there's no bite to it. It doesn't, it's not velvety, velvety at all. Like, like your traditional cabs, obviously. Um, it doesn't really stick to your mouth. It just goes straight through. Um, there's no like film on your mouth after you drink it. Yeah, you just when it hits your nose, I feel like. Switch up. Yeah, but overall, you know, not bad. Nice change of pace. But anyway. Yeah. Um, we'll dive right in. Um, so this was two nights, Fenway Park in Boston. Um, really, really strong live tracks. Matt yeah. calls it like a beginner's uh, I, yeah, live I, album. Yeah, it's very beginner friendly. That's what we're, we're going to talk about. They're pretty much all the classics. Like if you if you can name a Dave Matthews standard song, like it's on here. Like there's they just play all the standards. It's literally you know the classic beginner's album. Uh, technically, it is a live track. It's live track volume six, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels like an actual live but, album. Yeah, it feels like a legit thing. The... I mean, it, you know, I think overall it's probably the most popular of the live tracks. Um, what else? And then we were we were also talking about how this um, live tracks are normally just available online through the Dave Matthews Band website, and you can find them on like 
iTunes, that kind of thing, but this one was actually sold physically in the Boston area. Yeah, due to the high demand. So this was the only live track that was sold uh, in physical form, I guess, or out, you know, outside of the Idiot Matthews website in physical yeah. form. Yeah, okay. Um, so we'll, anyway. dive, we'll dive right in. They start off really, really strong. Um, the really good every day. Um, got lots of strong, heavy Boyd on all the jams. The intro, um, he plays like the Honey Honey intro. Um, you can hear in the background the crowd singing along, but they're not actually singing it. Um, they sing it at the end, but it's just very strong um, Boyd jams throughout the beginning and middle. Um, anything else? Um, no. Yeah. yeah. Dave also does some really good like improvs and ditties, um, just messing around. Um, Was he the Buffalo Herd in this too? Mm, I don't think Maybe so. Um, and then, you know, the show just like continues like really, really strong. He goes into Pig, Proudest Monkey, Satellite, um, and then I just flagged the idea of you um, just because this is the, they started playing it on the 2006 tour. Um, and I think this is the first album that it appears on. Um, it's not on any studio album, but this is the first album that it is um, like physically published hmm. on. And it's never been on a studio album to this no. day, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. they, do, they do play it occasionally. It's a good song, but they started playing it on the 2006 tour, and this was the first um, album that it was recorded on. Um, and then just continues really strong with Gray Street after that, and then with Bartender. Bartender. So this is another one of the standards I like to point out. Uh, I say this is a standard because it's the it's it's one of the first bartenders that I listened to that had the classic. If I only had a brain jam, we call it if I only had a brain, but I guess it could be anything. If I only had a heart, or if I only had a. What's the last one? I don't know. But anyway, it's from The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's from The Wizard of Oz, um, and it's a very distinct jam, and Jeff, even though Leroy is no longer with us, Jeff Coffin continues to do to do the same uh, jam in the same exact part of Bartender, and it's just an awesome little thing. Um, it kind of changes the whole pace of Bartender. Bartender is a very dark song in general, and this yeah, kind of makes it a little bit lighter. Yeah. yeah, it makes it a little more goofy, more so it makes it a lot more fun. Yeah. And then after that, we get a classic crowd pleaser, Crash Into Me, um, followed by a very long 18-minute Jimmy Thing with lots of um, just funky brass jamming. Um, it features another band, um, a blues band from the 80s, um, The Cool and the Gang. Um, so just a fun Jimmy Thing. We don't really have much more to say other than that. Yeah. Um, and then again, just like still, just the show, just like still really strong. You get last stop. Is this the start of the second night, though? Yeah. Well, anyway. there's three discs, um, so this is the okay. start of the second disc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, three yeah. discs, two nights. So okay. I don't know how okay. it was like published. Yeah, sure. But anyway, uh, we're not going to delve into blast up right now. We're that we're going to save that for another episode, live tracks volume one. But anyway, um, let's keep going here. Um, I think next we're going to talk about Grace is Gone and uh, amazing version. I would say this is the definitive version for those that are counting at home. How many times I say definitive? This is the definitive version of Grace is Gone. I don't think I'm going to have many many contradictors on that statement. Anyway, it's called it's called Grace is Gone, but actually it should be titled Grace is Gone into. Blackwater, well, or Grace is going into, go into it. Dixieland. They don't go into it, but it's it's, it's, it's a in very the middle. It's like a it's yeah. an interlude. It should be called Grace is Gone into Dixieland Bluegrass Jam. That's what it should be called. Fifteen minute Grace is Gone, amazing. They've done it a few times before. This isn't like the only. Well, they do. Yeah. Time. Well, they when they they've done Grace is Gone into Blackwater before, and they they actually sing Blackwater. This one they don't. They just yeah. Play. No sing. No sing. On they just part, play but. the melody. Yeah. Um, but anyway, amazing bluegrass jam after Grace is Gone. Uh, I mean, Grace is Gone is, is already an amazing song, but um, you can tell like they kind of slow down, they kind of finish it up, and then they just and then they just go straight right into this bluegrass and bluegrass jam. And the band is and they, the the crowd is like, you know, what's going on? They literally don't know what's going on. But uh, anyway, 
amazing yeah, it's just segue. Really, it's just really fun. Yeah. Because um, you hear that familiar, you hear just like the familiar chords of that, and it just makes you want to dance and sing along. Um, really strong fiddle and that kind of yeah. thing. So it's just a good time. Yeah. Um, you know, they're playing uh, in Charlottesville on the 25th, I believe, and this is just one of those songs where I, I could feel it coming. You know, if they if they wanted to do something, it would be just it would, it's a real crowd pleaser, and it, I just feel like it gets the whole crowd uh, jumping around and dancing, and it would be a great addition to their Scott Stadium uh, concert on the 25th. So I don't know. It's one of my predictions for something they're going to do at the upcoming Charlottesville concert for Unity. So we'll see if that happens. Um, and then moving on, just like to mention, they play American Baby here. Um, right after Grace is gone, but you don't get the American Baby intro until the very end of the show. So it's just interesting mm -hmm. that they split the two up like that. Um, keep going, and you know, they do the classic Boston Sweet Caroline, another crowd pleaser, just a quick little um, fun thing for the crowd, some familiarity in the Fenway um, Park. Anything, do you want to say anything about the so much? Yeah, they do, the, as we talked about with Central Park, they do do the classic, I think we talked about it with Pima, actually, they do the classic so much to say, and anyone see the bridge into too much. Um, so we love that, obviously. This is a good crush, too, I think. Um, but uh, anyway, a great what you are, too, with the didgeridoo intro and everything. Um, but moving on to Warehouse, this is another standard okay. version of Warehouse. Well, Nancy. Oh, yeah, this is a good Nancy's really good intro. Nancy's, too. Just, um, like, a really interesting intro. Um, yeah. Just more along the lines of, like, a little thing, storytelling-type intro. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that are the fan of the little thing intro, yeah. this is, like, this is a different take Luther on Powers. that. Yeah, it's just, like, um, it's not, it isn't obviously the little thing intro, but it's just, like, it's just, like, a whole new um, improv that he does. So it's, it's another interesting Nancy's intro. Um, okay. And then Warehouse. Yeah, great warehouse. Um, the classic intro, just a great version overall. But uh, the one that really separates this is they actually do the whole Louie Louie jam, uh, mid about you know almost to the end of it, um, which is I think this is this is probably one of the first one of the one of the beginning times where they actually did this. I mean nowadays nowadays every time they play warehouse the crowd always is into it, but. They actually very rarely go actually, they'll actually very yeah, rarely like will do the Louis Louis lyrics. Yeah. But this is a great version of it. Uh, this kind of goes back to why I call it this, the standard beginner's album, just because it shows you all these great standards. Like a lot of great crowd participation, a lot of great, yeah. Just yeah. A lot of great. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this kind of just goes back to why it's a, just use a standard standard beginner's album that, that really teaches you what the band is all about yep um all right we're gonna wrap things up here with the the last two songs uh american baby intro into two step yeah it's like a really fun new way to yeah to intro two step um the american baby intro Welcome yeah. to the front of that. I mean, they're both, I just feel like they're both like dark. Well, when he does the intro to two step, he definitely does like a lot of dark things, like says a lot of dark lyrics and does a lot of like, I don't know, I just feel like Time Bomb's like really dark too. So, and yeah. to me, it just reminds, like the American Baby intro just reminds me a lot of that. Yeah, um, this this was the original, American Baby intro was the original Time Bomb before Big Whiskey, if you think about it. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's they call it a song, but it's not really a song. It's an intro. I mean, they always they always pair it with another, another song. It never just kind of stands on its own. Um, but anyway, American Baby Intro is just such a powerful song in general. I mean, there's just so much screaming. There's so much uh, emotion. It's very esoteric. Uh, Butch has an amazing solo. I mean, they, they can't even do it anymore because they don't Butch. They literally cannot play this song. It's one of those. It's one of those songs they literally cannot play anymore. Like Linus and Lucy, they can't do that anymore. Uh, they can't do American Baby because they don't have the keys. Yeah, I mean, you know. We're just a keys player. We're just a keys player in general, but they literally cannot play the song without yeah. keyboarders. But, anyway, uh, it's just so powerful because it builds into some giant thing, you know, that just, it starts off so small, but it just builds and builds and builds and builds. And towards the end, there's these, like, slight little, like, cricket sounds, like, insect sounds. And um, it just kind of builds into the two-step, and it's a great two-step in general, too. Uh, a great and you know like like when he does time bomb and two step two step he also does like an actual intro to two step as well 
which is very good. Uh, I call it the I call it the tell me a story intro. It's all sort of about telling me a story. Um, but anyway, amazing intro to two step. Definitely recommend it. One of the one of the top two steps of all time. But you know, there's so many others I can't even list them. But anyway, anything yeah. else? No, just overall really solid album, solid live show. Um, good place to start if you're new to like live days. Yeah. It's it's that great 2006 era, which we love. Obviously, Piedmont, you know, Piedmont was around then. Central Park was a little before, but it still had that great butch sound with everyone else. So yeah, definitely check it out and enjoy some great wine too. Uh, wherever you're from, check out that region's wine as well. But anyway, this is a great Maryland Pinot Noir from Deep Creek Lake. But anyway, support local wine, support local music, and we're out.